we often hear in clinical contexts and in life contexts how important it is to be centered. And there's different paradigms, ways of looking at it, different religious and philosophical perspectives that you can adopt. But the, the idea of being at peace and calm and ready to respond to anything that comes to you is an ancient principle. It's something that is not typically taught in schools. Religions don't typically address this. It's a notion that can be found in uh, schools of psychology, perhaps, uh, in, uh, in some Chinese uh, philosophy and Japanese philosophy as well, and elsewhere. But the idea of centering one's mind and being at peace and uh, at present in the moment, not just being at peace in the matter of being asleep, but being live, alive and awake and very much present and okay with that. And this is a state of mind that can be achieved pretty much anywhere, anytime, and then it's very important to be able to achieve this state of mind, not only for ourselves, but to also be able to demonstrate this to others around us as required. And in this context, I'm, I'm going to address, uh, for example, in particular, uh, applications vis-a-vis -vis children, young people, in a context of counseling uh, for a variety of needs. And so there's different ways of approaching meditation in order to achieve the sense of awareness and self-control. And there's much to be said about this, and um, much of this can be uh, described also if you look on Vision Mechanic and look for Core 4. And there's other no notes on meditation as well. And uh, so in this case, I'm going to show you one quick technique that works really well with children. They enjoy it because it's fun, it's playing with fire in a sense, but it also creates a platform uh, on which we can talk to children, and I'm not going to specify an age, but this can go very young, so long as the child can understand the concept that you're, that you're presenting, and that is to be still and to pay attention. Now, it's a way of achieving greater attention, but it's also a matter of taking advantage of a child who can already pay attention and help them to calm down and to focus their mind and to dispel other things that might be disturbing them. Okay? There's many forms of meditation, bead meditation, breath meditation. This is candle meditation. And I have notes on it, uh, on this on the website. I'll demonstrate for you here. It's very simple. I have a candle. You can pick a candle that you like. And I would suggest that you obviously do this in an environment that's safe. But be prepared to, you know, play around with the candle at some point. And I'm not going to uh, diminish the discussion. and and uh, diminish your intelligence by telling you how to be careful with children around candles, but it's a candle, all right? Candles are interesting. It's fire, it's real, it's science, it's reality. Certainly they have a heat to them, they create light, and I would suggest that you use diminished lighting when you're doing this exercise. But I suggest primarily that you sit close to whoever you're dealing with. If it's a child or a young uh, uh, a teenager, an adolescent, you sit reasonably close to them in a comfortable way, and you place the candle there, and you invite them to simply observe the candle, just observe the flame. That's all. And while they're observing the flame, just to monitor their breath, the inhalation. And on the first breath, you can kind of hold it a little bit, not too long, don't force this, and then just exhale in a natural way. And follow the natural cadence of your breath. But pay attention to the breath. Don't forget that you're, look, you're paying attention to your breath, the ins and the outs, as you're simply monitoring this flame. And there's different ways of monitoring this. How much time do you spend doing this? That's one question. And one recommendation is to have a small string of beads you can make with your client or you can give to the client, or perhaps they have something already. I like to make strings of beads for my clients. It connects them to the process, and it's personalized to them. It doesn't cost a lot. It's a nice activity to do with them. That said, they have a string of beads, and I like to make it so that, given wrist size, that they should have approximately 50 beads or so on the string. Okay? And with that, with each bead, they take one breath, or they mark one breath with each bead. So, for example, if I'm looking at this candle, I'm going to take a breath, and in a sense I have to buy the next breath by taking another bead. I'll just move the bead forward in my finger, 
and then I'll reload on, on, on another breath. Now, obviously, I'm taking a, a deep breath. I'm kind of uh, illustrating what I mean. But you take a natural breath, and you follow the natural cadence of your breathing. When you're ready for another breath, you pull a bead forward. I like to have an indicator bead on the string, so a larger bead or a special bead, which would indicate that I've completed the full circle. That way I don't have to count. So when you do a full circle, you can stop and move on to whatever it else you, you are doing. It's a nice time to move into some cognitive skills work or some fine motor skills work, but just to set the, the scene and to prepare the mind for whatever comes next. To stop thinking about everything, stop worrying about everything, but just to focus one's mind through taking in a simple flame. And very briefly, that's candle meditation. We can talk more about meditation, but in this very brief demonstration, you've looked at the candle element, you've looked at the breath element, as well as how to count using a string of beads. I encourage you to explore this with yourself and those close to you, including your clients. All right, let's leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed this video presentation on candle meditation and breath meditation.